ever since I got into Gundam, I've always had a thing for the underappreciated grunt mobile suits. And when it comes to army building, there's no better line than the 1144 scale high grade line. So today I'll be sharing my picks for the best kits to get if you want to build your very own army. First of all, let's get the most obvious one out of the way. The most iconic Gundam grunt is the Zaku. And the best version of it available at the moment in 1144 scale is the Origin version. Which one you go for though is entirely up to you, because frankly, they all share the same strengths for your army building purposes. I'm going to be showing the Zaku 1 on screen because, well, I have a weakness for the Zaku 1 and this is a very good version of it. At 1700 yen for the Zaku 1 and 1800 yen for the Zaku 2, they are on the more expensive side of a high grade in 144 scale, but that is not without a very good reason. In terms of construction, they're all advanced little kits with even somewhat of an inner frame, a highly detailed and modernized exterior, and extensive marking stickers. What makes them the perfect army builder units then are the following two points. They have customizable appearances, so you still have some distinction between your grunts. For the Zaku 1, this comes in the form of an optional shoulder shield, and both of the vanilla Zaku 2 kits can be built as one of two types, and they also come with a commander antenna, a very important thing for a Zaku. The second point then is the massive amount of weapons that they come with. All three kits come with a Heat Hawk, Bazooka, extra cartridges for the Bazooka that can also be stored on the mobile suit, an anti-ship rifle, Zaku machine gun, and then for the Zaku 2s, they also come with an extra machine gun. The only reason not to go for these Zakus is if you prefer a more clean anime look. And in that case, just wait a bit longer for the standard green release of the revived Shar Zaku 2. And if you're going to be getting a Zaku army, you of course also need a gym army. And trying to pick the best army building gym was significantly harder than for the Zaku. But at the end of the day, the gym ground type is one of the best self-contained packages to get. It's got a nice amount of detail, it's superbly articulated, and it comes with one of the best weapons loadouts of all modern high grade gyms. With two beam sabers, a machine gun with spare cartridges, a bazooka, a net gun, and a shield, this thing is ready for just about anything. Add to that a very down to earth color scheme and some marking decals, and this thing is totally worth it for army building. As an honorable mention then, I'm going to give a shout out to the gym kit that I've personally been army building the most, the Gym Quell. And the reason for that is that it's compatible with a variety of other kits like the Hazel and the Old Gundam Mark II, so there's a lot of variety to be had with just this simple little kit. Not to mention that the color scheme is just straight up badass. Be warned though. Once you get one of these quells or hazels, they will quite literally breed like rabbits. Moving away from the Universal Century, we've got the Wyndham from the Cosmic Era. And I'll be honest here, the Wyndham by itself isn't anything too special. The base model is neat, the backpack is good enough, and the weapons that it comes with are what it should come with. So why army build this machine? Well, it's compatible with all other striker packs to varying degrees, giving this thing a lot of extra appeal once you start combining it with other kits. On top of that, its very own striker pack can of course also be used by other striker pack compatible mobile suits, so you can have a lot of fun mixing and matching striker packs to build your own perfectly equipped squadron or army. And just as with the gyms, I'm going to be giving another honorable mention here to the machine that I've again been army building the most myself, and that is the Slaughter Dagger. 
and that is for the simple reason that I love the color scheme and I love the design of this machine. So why am I still recommending the Wyndham then? Well, the Slaughter Dagger is a remold of the Gun Barrel Dagger from 2004, which was an average kit at best back then. So by today's standards, the complete lack of seamline hiding is unacceptable, color accuracy is quite horrid, and the articulation is... there. Oh, and this version of the Ale Striker pack that the Slaughter Dagger comes with is straight up garbage. Next up then, we have the Leo. For many people in the West, this is a prime example of a grunt machine. It's a down-to-earth utilitarian design and has a lot of room for customizations. It's just a shame that in the show they were seemingly made out of weapons-grade explodium. Anyways, the model kit. This is about as basic as it gets. It comes with a trusty machine gun, a shield and two beam sabers, Combine that with enough articulation and a price tag of merely 1000 yen or not even $10 and you can easily go out and buy an army of these things, which is totally what I did. And if you then want to add some extra flavor to your army, there's also a P Bandai set that includes all of the different backpacks and also all of the weapons. And it's quite an economical set too, because just one of these full weapon sets easily gives you enough weapons to customize 4 to 5 Leos. Then all that's left to do is to grab a tall geese to lead them into battle. My next recommendation then is the High Grade Greys, or one of its many variants, from the Iron Blooded Orphans universe. At first glance, the reasons for buying this are very similar to those of the Leo. We've got a 1000 yen base kit with good articulation, a basic weapon slowdown consisting of a machine gun and an axe, a commander's antenna and two types of boosters, a ground and space version. So that's already quite a good bang for your buck and the perfect backbone for your Iron Blooded Orphans army. What really makes the Grey stand out then is the fact that almost the entire Iron Blooded Orphans lineup uses a variant of the same inner frame, making them extremely modular. So not only can you easily use almost all, if not all, of the accessories from the 9 Iron Blooded Orphans option sets, but you can also easily mix and match parts from other Iron Blooded Orphans model kits. And while that last option might not be entirely realistic for an army unit, I can totally see this happening for a private military company that got their hands on some grazes or gay rails, which is my honorable mention for this entry. And then finally, we're ending this list with a very different beast, the Dobin Wolf from Double Zeta Gundam. Up until now, I've been recommending kits with customizability, expansion options, articulation, etc. The Dobin Wolf, though, doesn't care at all. It's an intimidating monster of a mobile suit with an incredible arsenal of weapons built into it. It's got a bunch of small missiles, two big missiles, two mega particle cannons, two beam cannons, beam guns in the arms that can function as incomes, two beam sabers, and for good measure, two 30mm Vulcan guns. For extra handheld equipment then, it just comes with its own custom beam rifle that can also hook up to those mega particle cannons on the chest. So what the Dovin Wolf comes with is for the Dovin Wolf. And in addition to this, it even comes with its own unique way of designating a commander unit. On the Grunt Dobin Wolves, the income arms simply detach. But on the commander machines, they reveal two hidden arms so that the Dovin Wolf can still grab its beam sabers while the arms are busy killing other things. And somehow, Neo Zeon was able to mass produce this thing, so it totally counts as an army builder unit. At 2200 yen, or around $20, it might be the most expensive machine on this list, but for what it is and for all the stuff we're getting, 
it's a steal. Even to this day, it's one of the best bang for your buck high grades out there. And I still mention it in reviews of the more expensive high grades because this typically makes them feel like bad deals. So this thing is totally worth getting for your intimidating army. And those were my recommendations for the best 144 scale high grade army builder kits. Let me know down below which one is your favorite, whether it was on this list or not, and whether or not you're actually army building it. So that's all for this video. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.